Hi and welcome. The first part of the video is an overview of the charger. The second part of the video is a charging demonstration of LiPo batteries. And as you can see, it is a Team Great Hobbies Q6400 ACDC 4 port multi chemistry charger. There are four independent outputs, so charging of different voltages and chemistries can be done at the same time. Each output is an independent charger and has a 100 watt max charge rate. To determine how many watts you are using, use the formula watts equals amps times volts. To determine the max amps of the charger for any size of battery, use the formula amps equals watts divided by volts. Of course, you would still have to stay within the C rating of the battery. I will discuss this more in the charging demonstration. You have to set the parameters for each charger. Press bat type until you get to user set. Press the start button to enter user set. Use the increment and decrement buttons to cycle through the user set menu. Precharge time. This is used when any battery cell is below 3.7 volts per cell. The lower the voltage, the longer the precharge time. The precharge is charging your battery at a very low voltage to try and revive it so it will take a normal charge. Reviving a bad cell this way does not always work, so before you start charging your battery at a normal charge, manually check the battery to be sure all the cells are higher than 3.7 volts. Reset your settings back to factory default. Battery end volt LiPo, 4.2 volts per cell. Do not make any changes to this setting. 4.2 volts per cell is where you want your LiPo voltage to get to when charging. After the final charge, your battery may not end at 4.2 volts per cell. It more than likely will be slightly under. This is mostly due to 4.2 volts per cell is the perfect charge. There are other factors such as age of the battery as well. Next is your backlight and key beeps and buzzer which is used when charging is complete. Input power, low cutoff. When you are using your DC supply, the charger will shut off at 11.0 volts. Capacity cutoff. I don't use this setting for LiPo charging. LiPo parameters are preset at the charging menu. Safety timer. Same as capacity cutoff, I do not use this for LiPo charging. Temperature cutoff. Additional cables will be required, which I did not purchase. I don't leave the charging lipos unattended and use my hand for temperature checks. If your lipos get a little warm, similar to after a flight, that is okay. If they start to get hot or start puffing, remove them from the charger immediately and place them in a safe place. For battery disposal, contact the battery manufacturer. NICAD sensitivity. This is used when charging in NICAD batteries and determines when the NICAD is charged. Nickel metal hydrate sensitivity. Same is NICAD charging but determines when the nickel metal hydrate is charged. Wait time is used when cycling your batteries between charge and discharge. It allows your batteries to cool before going into the next cycle. And back to pre-charge time. As I said earlier, each charger has to be set up independently. On the next charger, for example number two, press bat type until you get to user set and then press start to enter. Use the decrement and increment buttons to cycle through the user set menu. The charger has a built-in AC-DC power supply, so you can use it in the home or attach directly to a car battery. There is a voltage selector on the side, so you can run the charger on 110 or 220 AC. Do not use the car battery in your car. Use a separate 12 volt battery that is removed from the car and used in the charging area. Keep the charging area free of people, flammable and combustible objects. Never charge batteries unattended. I found that both the AC and DC cables were too short. The AC cable has this type of connection and is about 40 inches long, so I used an old PC monitor cable which is about 6 feet long. The DC cable has XT60 and banana plug connections and is about 18 inches long, so it would be pretty easy to make longer cables or extend the stock cables. It has reverse output polarity protection and can charge the following batteries. LiPo, Li-Ion, Life, Nickel Metal Hydrate, 
nickel cadmium, PB battery, and digital power. Displays are in real time displaying information about voltage, charge current, temperature, capacity, etc. The display is very easy to read if you are charging at home, but if you are at the field, the display readout is difficult to see in the bright sunlight. Shading the display readout is helpful. The charger has several charge options. Balance charge, charge without balancing, storage charge, and discharge. Two of these balance boards come with the charger. So if you are going to balance charge four batteries at the same time, you will need to purchase two additional balance boards. They look a bit different, but they work just fine. I know some say you only have to balance charge every third or fourth time. I like to balance charge every time. I believe balance charging every time keeps your lipos in better condition, gives them a longer life, and gives you longer run times. There is no time difference between balance charging or doing a straight charge. But during balance charging, the internal processor of the charger will monitor and control the voltage of each cell of the battery pack. When balance charging, the charger will keep the individual cell balancing within plus or minus 0.01 volt. Deciding what to set the charger at is a two-step process. Step one. First, we must decide what can the charger safely deliver. Using the formula watts equals amps times volts, we can also say amps equals watts divided by volts. So if we plug in a three, four, five, and six cell pack into the formula, we can figure out how many max amps we can set this charger to. A 3 cell is 12.6 volts. We know that each charger is capable of 100 watts. So if we put those numbers into the formula, amps equals 100 divided by 12.6, we get 7.9 amps. Meaning, the maximum amps we can set the charger to for a 3 cell LiPo pack is 7.9 amps. Now, do the same thing for the other cell packs, and we get 5.9 amps for a 4 cell, 4.7 amps for a 5 cell, and 3.9 amps for a 6 cell. Step 2 of the process, we have to decide how many amps can the battery safely receive. Each battery is different, so this must be done for each battery. We do this by looking at the C charge rating of the battery and the milliamp hour rating of the battery. This Team Great Hobbies 3 cell battery says we can charge at 3 to 5 C. The milliamp hour is 2200. We then convert milliamp hours to amps, which in this case is 2.2 amps. We then multiply 3 to 5 C charge rating by 2.2 amps. So according to the instructions, we can charge this battery between 6.6 .6 to 11 amps. We already figured out the most we can get out of this charger for a 3 cell is 7.9 amps. If I am at the field, I like to err on the safe side, so I would charge this battery at 5 amps. Now I want to double check to make sure I am not overloading the charger. Back to the formula of watts equals amps times volts. So 5 amps times 12.6 volts equals 63 watts. I feel good about choosing 5 amps because I am well under the 100 watt maximum for the charger and under the C charge rating of the battery of 6.6 .6 to 11 amps. It's always best to charge your batteries at 1C charge rating. With that said, when I am at the field and if my battery allows a faster charge rating of 1C, I charge my batteries faster than 1C charge rating. If I am charging my batteries at home for the next day of flying, I will only charge at 1C charge rating. My next battery is an E-Flight high power series. It is a 3 cell 3200 milliamp hour. It does not give you a C charge rating for charging. No matter where I am, I would only charge this battery at 1C charge rating, or 3.2 amps. Next is set up the charger to the parameters we decided was safe for these batteries. First, using a voltmeter, make sure none of your cells are below 3.7 volts. If any of the cells are below 3.7 volts, you may want to think about doing a pre-charge before putting them on a charge.
I like to balance charge, so plug in the balance boards. Plug in your charge leads, plug in your battery to the charge leads and balance board. Press the bat type button and cycle to the battery type you want to select. In these cases, LiPo battery. Press start button. Press the increment button to select the type of charge for the battery. In this case, I will select LiPo balance charge. Press the start button to select the battery particulars. On charger 1, select 3S C2200, which is the milliamp hour of the battery, and 5 amp for the charge rate. The C has nothing to do with charge rate. It is just a title. It is for your reference only. Press the start button to select the battery particulars. On charger 2, select 3S C3200 and 3.2 amp for the charge rate. Press and hold the start button. Just before charging begins, a confirmation screen will appear. The R tells you how many cells a charger found and the S is how many cells you set. This is where you want to ensure you have the correct number of cells selected. If the R and the S numbers do not match, do not start the charging process. By not pressing any buttons, the charging process will automatically cancel. If the R and S numbers match with the correct cells, press the start button to confirm and the charging process will begin. Again, press and hold the start button. The confirmation screen looks good, so press the start button to begin the charge process. The first part of the process is constant amps and will charge at the amps you have selected. It will stay at this process until the batteries reach 12.6 volts. As you can see, charger 1 is at 5 amps and charger 2 is at 3.2 amps and the voltage is slowly increasing. The second part of the process is when the charger gets to 12.6 volts. During this process, the voltage will remain the same and the amps will drop. The third process happens during the boat, the last 5% of the charge. During this process, the charger turns off and on to get the last few amps into the battery. You don't hear the charger turning off and on as this process is happening inside the charger. Once the amps drop to about 0.2 amps, the charger will shut off and charging will be complete. I will now stop the video and come back during different stages of the charge process. On charger number one, the volts have reached 12.6, so now the amps are beginning to drop. While on charger number two, the volts are still increasing, so the amps remain at 3.2. On charger number one is now full. You can see that the amps are at zero, voltage is 12.6, how long it took and how many milliamps it put in. On charger number two, it is still charging. Both chargers have reached 12.6 volts, so now both chargers are dropping the amps. This is the voltage check on the 2200 milliamp hour battery right after charging. As charger number two has completed its charge, it flashes full and will also make this beeping sound. This is the voltage check on the E-Flight battery right after the charge. This is the voltage check one hour after the charge on the Team Grade Hobbies 2200 milliamp hour battery. So there's not really a lot of change. And this is the one hour after check on the E-Flight battery. And also not a lot of change. If you have gotten this far watching the video, kudos to you. I use this charger both at home and at the field and like being able to charge multiple batteries to keep me flying. If you are using batteries and any of your RC stuff, this charger would be a great addition. Thanks for watching.